Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Master Paul. I am honored to be connecting with you today. On today's live stream, it is the 8th of November. It's a Wednesday. And today, I'll be connecting with you on the subject of Da I, the greatest love, how we can reconnect to some of the aspects of it that we may have lost. Da I is a Mandarin Chinese word. <clears throat> it means greatest love. And it is something related to the wisdom and teachings of my spiritual teacher and father, Master Shaw. So I'll be sharing with you some of his wisdom and how we can apply some common sense steps so that we can yeah. refill some of the empty tank maybe that we may have um, experienced over time. A lot of us come into this life with a great deal of love and some of us are able to maintain it, some of us are able to expand it. But a lot of us, we really want to be able to um, just have some of it in our life. And so there is actually steps that one can take to bring Da I, the greatest love, back into your life. So that's what you can look forward to today for everyone that's just tuning in. Uh, my name is Master Paul, and I do these live streams four days a week, Monday through Thursday, <clears throat> same time. I've been doing them for over a year now. And one of the reasons I keep doing it is because of the feedback that I receive. I have many other projects and many other responsibilities. This is a service that I do to assist anybody that's willing to listen and apply the wisdom. Uh, the wisdom is not mine. I don't take credit for it. Um, I offer the wisdom and teachings that has been brought to humanity through a dear spiritual father. His name is Master Shaw. I encourage you to learn more about him um, and do a little homework on your own. But he has about 20 books, uh, 11 of which are New York Times bestsellers. And he's dedicated to serving humanity. And he teaches a lot of foundational wisdoms, including this one, Da Ai which is one of the 10 Da's, as he refers to it, the 10 greatest qualities. And so uh, I will touch on each of those a little bit, <clears throat> but uh, today our focus is on Da I. For those that missed yesterday, I taught a practice that I got a lot of positive feedback on, and it was using three special sacred tones to help bring balance to your health. And the only thing that is required to actually have success with it is practice. Unfortunately, probably not too many people out there do that. And so it creates a bit of a problem in that uh, you're not going to have any benefits whatsoever if you don't practice. So um, those three sacred tones, if you miss that, go to yesterday's live stream and watch it. It is actually a... Um, a practice that anybody who does it 10 or 15 minutes uh, definitely notices a difference <clears throat> because it moves the blockages in the body. And it's very simple to accomplish. And so um, also uh, each and every uh, day that I'm on the live stream, I apply a lot of the foundational teachings of the four powers, which include body power, sound power, mind power, and most importantly, the subject of soul power. So you will hear me say the word soul a lot. So as we start to gather some steam and gather more people to this live stream, uh, you will uh, hear me go into a variety of aspects of the four power teachings at the appropriate time. But today I'm going to uh, try to follow my, my own self-made mandate. Um, as a master teacher, I have trained for about 10 years and obviously Part of that training is meditation and listening to heaven. And so yesterday I asked heaven, what do I need to do differently uh, and better to serve all of those that watch on this live stream? And they said, do more practice. And so I will be focusing more on practice with Da I today. So let's acknowledge all those that have joined us. <clears throat> welcome Heather Houston, Aloha Kristen Strachan, and welcome also to Patrice Avelaine Vinay. Uh, welcome Kristen Rojas, welcome Peggy Blake, aloha Vanessa, aloha also to Nina and Isabel. Uh, welcome Crane, aloha also to Nelson and Bonnie Robinson. Welcome uh, Pat 
and Aloha Kathy. <coughs> Aloha Janice Crosby. And Aloha to Ilona. Welcome Paula Hyatt. And Aloha also to Elizabeth and Gary Dougherty. Welcome also to Brianna. And Aloha Adriana. Welcome Deborah. Welcome also to uh, Sharon Dodd. And welcome Farah Faranaz. Faranaz. Uh, I won't be doing soul readings today, Faranaz. This will be a, a teaching on how to reconnect and bring more love into our life. <clears throat> and it's not limited to relationship love. Uh, welcome Angie Kinney. Welcome Heather Clem. And also anyone else, if I missed your name, please forgive me. So um, let us go ahead and connect as other people are uh, uh, finding this live stream. Welcome also to Melissa Reiki. So <clears throat> we're going to start by placing our hands in soul light, soul service hand position, which is a hand mudra position like the prayer position is a hand mudra position. You see sometimes the Buddhas carry their fingers like this. Well, when we place our left hand on our heart center and the right hand, just like a prayer position, but the right hand remains in place, and the left hand goes over the heart center. This is also a hand mudra position, and it connects heaven to our heart center. So please, um, if it's comfortable, do this position. I'm going to call forth all the beings of light uh, for the wisdom, teachings, and blessings that will be offered today. Welcome also to Ruth McLean, and welcome also Stephanie Cannon. Great to see everybody here, and I think I missed one person here. No, I think I got everybody, okay. <clears throat> Dear our beloved divine creator, all layers of the divine down source, all committees in heaven serving the plan of the light side. The soul of all of heaven's animals, guides, angels, saints, angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifu, saints, beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, beloved Buddhas, beloved Konyan, uh, individual heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints. We love you, we honor you, respect you. Deeply appreciate your unconditional love and service for humanity. We ask as appropriate with the greatest gratitude for your presence at this time. We ask that you help guide each and every one of us through the blockages that are present in our life, especially for today. Please bless each and every one of us to align our hearts and souls more with your love and unconditional presence. Please bless us to grow our da'ai, our greatest love. Please guide this wisdom, teaching, and blessings as appropriate. Dear the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, we love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask that you turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to please join at this time <clears throat> to chant the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony and to bring more love and light to humanity. So for those that are new, just tuning in, this is a mantra. This is a healing mantra. You may uh, request a blessing at this time, and we will chant it just one or two rounds, and then we'll move into the teaching wisdom and blessings. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula. La li lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la o ai wo xin ha ling wo ai ren ren li wang li hing rong er er mu I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. 
love, peace, and harmony. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so welcome also to Chris Ezekiel. Aloha, Steve Hightower. How's Sedona, Steve? Uh, aloha and welcome also to Linda Long and Aspasia. Welcome, Luna. And welcome, Jenny Jane. Aloha, Robin Toth. And if anybody else has joined, I haven't mentioned your name, please forgive me. Welcome. Thank you for coming today. <clears throat> so today we're focusing on Da'ai, the greatest love, and how to bring more of it into our life. <clears throat> Most people, when they hear love or the greatest love, they instantly default to relationship. And although this wisdom will absolutely apply to that, it's not necessarily inherent to that. Da'ai, or the greatest love, which is Mandarin Chinese and then English, <clears throat> is an attribute. It is a quality. It is a virtue. In order for one to have the greatest love, one must first be the greatest love. And herein lies the problem, because in order to receive the greatest love, we have to be it first. Well, how can I be it if I don't have it, if I don't feel it, if I'm always in pain and in suffering, if I am always have something going on in my world that feels like uh, the whole world is against me, or in various areas of your life, it might feel that way. So this uh, wisdom today is about how to, with stepping stones, bring yourself back to Da I and the greatest love. And so, as indicated, it's, we, we cannot necessarily uh, always be that greatest love without um, clearing the blockages along the way so that we can express it piece by piece. Now, generally speaking, I, don't, I, I can't say it's probably true for everyone, but as a newborn child coming in, uh, most all newborn children come in with da I, the greatest love. They glow. They carry heaven's light with them, and they haven't necessarily been tarnished by, by this world or the teachings and the belief systems of this world. They haven't been um, changed and altered away from purity yet. And so <clears throat> typically what happens is we do come in with da I. We do come in with the greatest love in our heart, in every part of our heart, soul, mind, and body. But over the course of our life, things happen and we tend to uh, have difficulty holding on to it. Now, as with almost everything in our life, there is categories in which uh, da I exists. So we can have the greatest love, but in many different areas. Have you thought about the greatest love in your finances? Probably not. We always think about the greatest love in relationship to our, our relationships. But what about the greatest love for family? Yes, I can relate to that. What about the greatest love, da I, at the workplace? Oh, wow, that sounds a little foreign. Okay. But here's the thing the greatest love is not limited to where in your life it can show up, it can show up in every area of your life. And inherently, when you have a blockage area in your life, be it in finances or in health or in relationship, there is a blockage in the greatest love. One of the foundational one sentence secrets from my teacher, Master Shaw, is the one sentence secret, love melts all blockages. Love melts all blockages. Very simple sentence. Almost one you could just pass right by and say, yeah, that's nice, that's cute. Love literally is like the fire hydrant. It is like the fire itself. It can melt everything. If you had a massive fire hose and you had that much water coming through, you could put out a lot of fires. If you were a massive fire, you could pretty much burn through anything. Love has that kind of power. There's virtually nothing that it cannot overcome. Uh, in fact, there is nothing it cannot overcome because love is the original source creator. That is what you and I are originally made of. And our 
a child, our self, when we came into this world as a child, was fully infused with a great deal of that original love. Probably not the 100% that we uh, were born with in terms of when, when, when Creator bore us, when Creator created us at the very beginning, we were definitely at the 100 percentile at that point. Coming in as a child, it's unlikely we were at that same 100 percent, but um, nevertheless, love is what we originated from. Therefore, that can absolutely melt any blockage in our life. So the question becomes, how then do we go about getting some of that back in our life so that we can melt the various unpleasant areas in our life that we're not enjoying. So uh, also welcome to Brenda June Adams, Aloha Danta, welcome to uh, Bupinder, and welcome also to uh, Dweeba, Aloha Carol, Aloha Johnny Mambode. Johnny, I've been thinking about you, good to see you show up here. Welcome Kate, welcome Diane Schoenfeld, and welcome also to Alicia D'Amico, Brenda, Welcome. Welcome also to Edith Phipps. And let's see if I missed anybody. Welcome M.A. Drade. Okay. So love is, yes, the solution, but how do we get more of it in our life when we're dealing with life on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, on a crisis-to-crisis -crisis basis for some of us, right? One of the keys uh, is to be present. I know it sounds kind of simple, but it really is, because when we are present, we can actually tune in to love, which is what's needed to address that moment. When we are not present, we are in the past, which has memories, typically negative ones associated with it, or we are in the future, which is very often fear-based. So just pause here a moment and consider that. When you process through today, how many times did you find yourself not doing something because of a fear from the uh, fear from the future of what it could be, or a uh, you're you're literally looping through something that happened and it happened before and it brought up an anger. Uh, uh, maybe that child didn't listen for the seventeenth umpteenth time. Um, it doesn't allow us to be in a love space because we're either operating in the past or from a fearful future in our present moment. So one of the ways we can make a stepping stone, which is what this teaching is, to da I, to the greatest love, is to stop the culprits that um, steal the love from us. Because when we're, when we're operating in our past worries and, and, and thoughts, or when we're operating on future fears, it's, they're literally sucking our energies. They're sucking away our ability to um, just be present and allow the frequency of love to deal with whatever's in front of us. So let's see if I can create an example. Let's say that uh, we're driving to work or on the subway or some way on, on a transit and there is a series of events that make it basically impossible that you're going to get there in time. Okay? <clears throat> now, what this would bring up naturally is fears of the future. Okay, oh my God, what about losing my job? What I'm going to say to my boss? Um, uh, I'm going to be late again. They already told me he was going to write me up. Uh, brings up stuff from the past. Oh, I was late last time. Um, I told him I would never do that again. This is out of my control. It's something that the subway is doing. I had no control over the matter. Uh, there was some some jerk or idiot in front of me that cut me off, blah, 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 right? And so we're not stuck, obviously, in the present. We're stuck in both directions in that example. So how do we become present? We simply stop and we recognize what our brain is doing because most of us, we bring ourselves to life based on everything we've, we've, we've learned. And we try to, to bring less hassle into our future by bringing the wisdom from the past so that we can bring less hassle into our future. But none of us ever stop, really, to be present to the moment and just be in a place of love. When we actually do that, stop and be in that place of love, which requires us first to stop the past, and the future processes. Then we can go, okay, this 
is what it is. I am not God, at least not yet at this moment, and so I cannot change this instantaneously and zap myself to the office and be there in time. So it is what it is. That's step number one. Just to be present to the facts. Step number two is, well, if I cannot change this exact experience as it is, then I can send it love because any other process will not serve the future result. Any other process, fear will not serve the future result, uh, capitulating about the past will not serve the future result. Just being present and sending love will serve that future result. So that might look like, dear God, dear Jesus, dear Buddha, whoever you believe in, ask them if you have some transmissions, dear my transmissions. Dear the soul of the divine's love. This is soul power. I love you. Can you please come to sit in my heart center? Can you please bless me to relax my stress? I will chant divine love and relax the stress that I'm feeling. And could you please also radiate this divine love to my boss and anyone that I might be running into when I get to work a little late and allow them to be in a very loving, forgiving space where they hear what has transpired so that they don't hold it against me. This is a conscious activation of love. And you could be very, very surprised what happens because literally we are all in a constant uh, state of creating our world and our experience. And yet very often we operate in the past and the future so we're unable to be in that place of da I. The stepping stones to greatest love begin with recognizing what takes it away from you. And almost always what takes it away from us is experiences, experiences that enter our life in that moment or experiences that enter our life coming up. It could be something that we dread, okay? We know we're going to have to give that speech in a week and a half. We know we're going to have to turn in that term paper. We know we're going to have to, uh, that we're going to be greater than the job. We, we dread the husband or the wife coming home because this and this and that wasn't done. <clears throat> when we get into that place of dread, that's not a place of love. Da I can only occur when we stop the monkey mind, stop the, the wheel of karma almost, uh, and be present. In that moment, we have 100% control. When we are not in that moment by agreeing, to see the, the clutter, we are out of control. In order to bring a relationship into your life that you have been trying so hard to bring to you, there is more than this answer, definitely. But one of the ways is watching your monkey mind. I'm not worthy. You know, maybe I'm not good enough, fat enough, smart enough, long enough hair, blonde enough hair, pretty enough teeth, uh, 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 you know, the, the monkey mind is just as endless, right? It can say all kinds of unpleasant things about our worthiness or lack thereof. Um, there are many facets, but one thing I can absolutely assure you, the ability to attract love to you is first and foremost built upon your ability to be in love on a consistent basis. Being, meaning being in that moment, in that place of da I. So welcome also John Sabin, welcome Anjali Flauta, welcome Angie Taylor, uh, and welcome uh, Salviano Tre, welcome Candace Cheeks, and welcome also Tammy Lee Blake, welcome Bedelia Burnett, and Diana Victoria, welcome. Thank you for joining. <coughs> Being with each moment, granted, not always easy, okay? But understand that, what's the alternative? Are you enjoying the lack of greatest love in your life? Are you enjoying uh, getting beat over the head by the coworkers? Are you enjoying uh, a lack of financial flourishing? Are you enjoying a lack of overall health? You can be wallowing in the negative health experience, the pain, uh, the, uh, the sore back, whatever, you can, you can wallow in that. That is a choice. 
uh, but you can also choose love. Now, when you choose to be present, you always have tools available to you. If you're Christian, grab that Bible, use it. If you're a Buddhist, uh, grab you know a picture of Kuan Yin or Buddha and chant with them. If you if you uh, follow different teachings, grab the Quran, grab whatever. Okay, these are these are they're all carry higher frequencies of love, light, forgiveness, and compassion. And in those moments, we can be present. What we as spiritual beings, you and I, and all those that are awakening, what we must really come to realize very shortly, very quickly, guys, I'm not, we're running out of time, very quickly, is that we are responsible for our creation. And if we can, a bit more often every day, stop the monkey mind, be present to the moment, not go down that path where the, the brain has been um, patterned to go down because our brain is patterned. Oh, well, this is a fear-based thought. Let's go down that road. Or, oh, this is, you know, a worry-based thought. Let's go down that road. If we can catch ourselves, we can choose a different process. Now, Master Shah's process is using joyful things, song, music, things like uh, calligraphy that carries frequencies, you're, you're Christian, great, pick up the Bible. It doesn't matter as long as it carries higher frequency. This is the key. Song almost always carries a higher frequency. If it's not, you know, a mega death or somebody like that, you can bear, catch a very nice song. You can simply chant, greatest love. It's going to carry a very beautiful frequency. And it is very important to manifesting our future. Uh, about 60 seconds ago, what did I say? Pay attention. Time is getting short. What did I mean by that? Literally, the whole world is going through a massive, massive shift towards light, which exposes massive amount of darkness. All we know about in the news is all this massive darkness, okay? But the reality is there's a massive amount of light too. The news, however, is controlled by... Um, those who are greedy and selfish and corrupt and not interested in our in our love and well-being and therefore that's what we see the majority of it doesn't mean it has to be our truth as an individual on a spiritual journey we must 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 be individually and collectively responsible for our future individually i need to be responsible for my future but my uh, future impacts yours and yours impacts mine. Why? Because we're one. If I'm up here doing my part to bring love and peace and harmony and you're over there wallowing in fear day after day after day and not thinking you can make a difference, then we're kind of negating each other's efforts. We need to work together in bringing Da I, the greatest love. We do that by stopping the cycle of the drama that tends to surround our, our, our brain or our thinking and our processes and choose every moment I forgive I choose love I choose to think something positive out of being stuck here in the subway I have pain now I have a health issue now I've just been diagnosed with cancer it doesn't matter the dilemma my my family member died and I'm still you know in a place of sorrow these are life experiences they will not stop they will keep coming what does matter is as a spiritual being, how do you respond to them? How do you respond to them? Why? Because that conscious stop in the moment and respond in the healthy, best, most positive way is what creates your tomorrow and your next week. And the consistency of those stop gap moments where you are more and more conscious, choosing more and more positive reaction, choosing more and more to be in a place of love, is what will bring you more love. Today's message is Da I, the greatest love, how to build the stepping stones. It's hard, as I said in the very beginning, to go from a place of suffering to a place of love. It's, it's virtually very hard. But we can do it incrementally. So we do it step by step by catching the patterns of our reactions and responses. They are karmic in nature. Understand that. The negativity, the doubts, the fears, it's all just karmic crud. So we stop it, 
by doing a forgiveness practice and choosing a better thought, applying something that works, like in Master Shah's teaching, we apply mantras, we apply um, a higher frequency thing. So I'm going to be doing that, but again, uh, you may choose to apply the same kind of a structure, uh, uh, a forgiveness practice and uh, a mantra associated with your belief system. Doesn't matter, as long as it creates a positive shift. Then all you got to do is keep duplicating that process, and that will help you create a little bit better moment, even if it's just that next hour is better. That's a whole lot better than being stuck in the crud for another hour. And when you're consistent with that, you could have a completely different life in a reasonably short period of time. Reasonably short, one week, one month, one year. Not bad if you got 40 years of suffering and in one year you can turn it all around. Why? Because you're responsible as a creator. Enough teaching, time to do practice. Welcome, Mags. And also, let's see if I missed anybody. Welcome Sherry Dowell. Welcome Christina Darling. Welcome Rowena. And welcome also to Richard Mojo. <coughs> so, uh, for those that are new, there is a soul song, a song called Love, Peace, and Harmony. The reason you hear me chant it in the beginning, the reason you'll hear me chant it now, is because it carries an extraordinarily high frequency. Common sense says, if you are low frequency, negativity, uh, uh, unpleasant thoughts, doubt, fear, da 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 da, and you bring love and peace and harmony, a higher frequency, then the higher frequency will eventually override the lower one. Common sense. That's why I keep saying apply the Quran, apply the Bible, apply anything that you know is higher frequency if this is not something that resonates with you directly. I have in my hand a love, peace, harmony calligraphy card, and it carries extraordinary frequency. Uh, we also, most of us know the song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, and Kristen Rojas, who is my assistant, love you Kristen, thank you for your service, has placed in her chat the, uh, the song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, so for those that are new, you can scroll to her chats and see those words. <clears throat> We're going to do a forgiveness practice. I'm going to go walk you through a step. You're going to choose one area of your life where you have difficulty finding love. Uh, it could be in your flourishing, it could be in your health, it could be uh, with coworkers, it could be um, with your husband or your wife, it could be simply a lack of relationship. You choose an area where uh, you're not in alignment with the greatest love, and uh, you will apply that as I walk you through this practice, okay? <clears throat> and then we will chant the song of love, peace, and harmony, and we will ask it to service. So you will see how we apply the four power technique, all right? So again, we start by placing our hands in the hand mudra position, the soul light, soul service hand position. Drop the left hand in front of the heart center, connecting heaven into our heart center. Close your eyes, and I will walk you through this practice. If it is comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear my beloved creator, all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, everything that makes up creator, I love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you. Dear my individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, I love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you. Could you please be present as well? Now you may invite other beings that you align to. Dear Jesus, Mother Mary, dear Buddha, dear Kuan Yin, whoever you align to, ask them to come. You can invite your grandmother if she's very close to you. These souls are here to serve us. They're here to assist us. That's why we invite them. We love you. We honor you. We deeply appreciate you and respect you. We ask for your presence and your blessings as appropriate to help each and every one of us further develop our Da I, our greatest love. Please bless me. You state this. Please bless me to release negativity, negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, fears, doubts, worries, concerns, criticism, self-criticism. Please bless me to release the monkey mind that does not allow me to choose more love and light in each new moment. I am very grateful. Thank you. Another soul power. 
Dear the soul of love, peace, and harmony song and the love, peace, and harmony calligraphy card. I love you, I honor you, I appreciate you. As we chant, could you please bless me to clear my blockages, align greater to love. I am very grateful. So this is soul power. Now we do a forgiveness practice. Again, if comfortable, please repeat. Dear all souls, in this time, in all time, if I or my ancestors have brought any form of harm or suffering to you, especially in the area that I am requesting, then you can say, especially in the area of finances, especially in the area of health, if I or my ancestors have harmed you in this area, from my heart and soul, I sincerely apologize. I don't remember ever harming anybody in this area of their life. But it is possible in the course of all time that I or my ancestors have done so. And if we have, there is truly no excuse for it. I simply from my heart ask you for your forgiveness. I also wish to offer my unconditional forgiveness to all souls, regardless of what harm they may have done to me. I release them all of any spiritual debt that they may have incurred with me by bringing harm to me. I do not wish to bring revenge to any of them. I wish to release them of this karmic debt so we can all move together in oneness and in love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so now we will chant the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. Kristen has reposted the words. You're welcome to join along. For those that just wish to keep their eyes closed and be in a meditative space, please do so. But remember, this is about gathering love. Okay? <clears throat> Let us chant together. Let us serve each other. Lu la lu la li. Lu la lu la la li. For those that are wondering, is this really going to work? Should I turn this off and go someplace else? I encourage you to calm your mind, just receive, and check. See if you feel better afterwards. Lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la
Shong I ping on a say, Shong I ping on a say. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, li. Lula. Shinnerling, white run and lay. Wang Ling Rong, her musher shang. Shang Hai Ping on a say. Shang Hai Ping on a I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Three more times. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, li. Lula. Oh, I was shivering. Oh, I turn and lay. Wrong leaning room, her musher shun. Shun I ping on a say. Shang I ping on a shea. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. La lu la li, la lu la la li, lu la lu la. Oh, I turn and lay. 
Wang Li Hing Rung Her Mu Shir Shang Shang I Ping On A Se Shang I Ping On A Se I love my art and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace. And harmony. Ha, ha, ha! Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we've had a couple people come in late. Welcome, Sarah. Welcome, Gina. Welcome, Peggy. And so, <coughs> check in with yourself. Do you feel more clear? Is your mind uh, less busy? Is your heart more open? Do you feel any vibration or heat anywhere in your body? Some people might feel a little vibration or heat below their rib cages. That means the, the organs of worry or anger were impacted, the liver or the spleen. Some people might be able to breathe better. So some sadness was released. Aloha, Christina. Welcome. Some people might notice some vibration on the crown of their head, or they might have had some third eye images that come up for them. Everyone could have a different experience or no experience. Even no experience matters not. Just because you don't feel anything using your five senses does not mean it's not happening. It simply means that uh, more practice is needed to further awaken the body. So I see vibration over his heart. Uh, feel happy, 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 and whole body is clear. Kate says her hands are hot. <clears throat> Thank you. I appreciate your sharing. So to remind you, as a whole, we have every day will keep coming to us. The moment we crack open our eyes to the moment we close them, life will come at us at 200 miles an hour. And we need to break free from the automatic practice of reacting to life, responding from a pattern. We do that through consciousness. We do that through making a conscious choice. Is this negative thought serving me at this time? Is it from the past? Because it reminds me of something. Is it from the future? Because I'm fearing something. Is this serving me? Obviously the answer will be no. Then I choose love. I choose to honor myself. I choose to use the frequency of love to shift whatever is going to happen moving forward. And you choose and you do a forgiveness practice and you connect at the soul level, you invite in the beings of light <clears throat> and you do a little practice. It could be two minutes. You could be on the subway train. You could be in your car. You could be at home when the kid's screaming at a hundred, you know, just going crazy. And you just do this for yourself for a few minutes. And you can chant divine love. You can chant anything with a higher frequency. You can put the Bible on your heart. You can grab uh, any Buddhist scripture, put it on your heart. You can grab whatever you want that has a higher frequency. Okay? Picture of Jesus doesn't matter. If it carries a higher frequency, it will serve you. Okay? Just allow yourself those few minutes and you will be so pleased with the results because afterwards no matter what that drama of that 200 mile hour day comes at you you'll be able to address it with a, a clearer vision a better more loving response l far less of a fear-based or reactive response and that will create for you a better moment a better hour a better day and you keep doing that, and that'll create better weeks and better months and better years. 
This is how we bring Da I into our life, moment by moment. Okay? <clears throat> so, Isabel, more peaceful and clearer mind. Kathy, she had to take her blanket off and was singing a high soprano voice, angel voice. Uh, so she had definitely had heaven coming through. Phyllis said, I just joined, got attacked by a tiny lady with Alzheimer's. I'm rehabbing a broken left wrist and arthritic knees in a nursing home. Good. Chant a lot. You, have, you need to chant a lot, Phyllis. You have a lot going on with you and it keeps coming at you. So you need to do a lot more forgiveness. You need to chant a lot of love, peace, and harmony to serve everybody around you, not to serve yourself. You need to chant love, peace, and harmony to serve everybody around you. And you, that will act like a buffer zone. It will act like a shield of light because uh, it's coming at you from every direction, Phyllis. You just need to be proactive and chant a lot. Uh, Christina need help with her throat and root chakra will this help blessings to all sending love and peace um, yes of course it will if you ask it to assist but I would suggest Christina um, connecting with me uh, after this and there are some you know there's some blessings you can get at a small honor fee that will clear a lot of blockages very fast there are some things you can do with this mantra to assist you uh, Suggest chanting for others. Serve others that have throat issues, that have root chakra issues. Um, okay. <clears throat> so thank you all so much for being with me today. I hope this wisdom and teaching served you well. The wisdom teachings of Master Shah are all about soul, all about forgiveness, all about love, compassion, light. Um, I add my flavor to it with the commonalities of life and how we can catch ourselves with fear and doubt. Uh, and so applying common sense life to common sense teachings, we can make a big difference. So please like, please share, let other people know about it. If you're interested in individual blessings, um, there is a small honor fee for those, but they can absolutely change your life very quickly. And uh, that's what I'm here to serve you. You can contact me through Facebook Messenger uh, or uh, email me. Okay? Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody.